Okay, so here's where we are. We have some region R in the xy plane, and then we have a function f on this region, and we'd like to calculate the double integral of f over this region R with respect to area. However, for whatever reason, we don't want to do this in the xy coordinates. For example, maybe the integral is impossible to evaluate directly in the xy coordinates. So we'd like to transform to some new coordinates u and v via a transformation t. And under this transformation t, the region r corresponds to the region s. And the formal way that we say that is that t is a bijection from s to r. And let's also assume that this bijection is differentiable. And then the question is, the double integral over r of fda corresponds to the double integral over s of what? Well, first of all, we're going to want to use the composite function, the composition, f composed with t from s to the real line. Okay, so this is the function corresponding to f on the region s. So we'll put f composed with t over here. And then we're going to want, analogously to the single variable case, the magnification factor. And then we'll put a d8 over here. Now what's the magnification factor? Well, what we want to do is we want to take a little rectangle in the region S. Let's say this has sides delta u and delta v. And we're going to see where this goes under the transformation t. So it's going to go something else. Okay? And the magnification factor is the limit as delta u and delta v go to zero. So this rectangle we're starting with is getting arbitrarily small of the area of t of the rectangle. Let's, what should I call this rectangle? Um, I already used the letter r. I don't know. Let's call this a. Okay. So a is the rectangle. So the area of t of the rectangle, a, divided by the area of A. And the area of A, of course, is delta U delta V. So then the question is, what is the area of T of A? So let's work this out on a new page. Okay. Um, so here is the rectangle A in the UV plane. Um, and let's look at the vectors corresponding to its sides. So the horizontal side, well, we're going delta U to the right, and we're not moving up or down at all. And then the vector corresponding to this vertical edge is 0 delta V. Right, and now we're going to apply the transformation t to it. And if this starting re rectangle is small, and if t is differentiable, then the image is going to be approximately a parallelogram. And what is this approximating parallelogram going to look like? Well, let's figure out what its edge vector should be. So let's say that this edge vector corresponds to what's happening to the horizontal edge. So what is this corresponding vector? Well, let's think. So if you move by delta u in the u direction, how much are you going to move in the x direction? Well, this is what the partial derivative measures, right? So the amount that we move in the x direction is going to be the partial derivative of x with respect to u times delta u. This is sort of the meaning of the partial derivative. It says if, it, if I move to the right by delta u over here, then the amount that I move in the x direction is approximately delta u times the partial derivative of x with respect to u. 
And then the second component says, if I move delta u to the right over here, how much do I move up over here? And the ratio is partial derivative of y with respect to u. And again, I multiply this by delta u. So that's the first edge vector of the parallelogram. And the second edge vector corresponds to one of the vertical edges. So now I'm moving up by delta v. And how much do I move in the x direction? Well, I move by delta v times the partial derivative of x with respect to v. And how much do I move in the y direction? Well, it's partial y, partial v, times delta v. Right, now we're supposed to find the area of this parallelogram. So remember that the area of a parallelogram is the absolute value of the determinant of the matrix that you get by putting in the edge vectors. Right, so in this case, the area is the absolute value of the determinant of what? Well, so the determinant of this matrix here, so I put in these vectors, so partial x, partial u, delta u, partial y, partial u, delta u, partial x, partial v, delta v, partial y, partial v, delta v. And so I have to multiply these two diagonal entries and subtract the other two diagonal entries. So I get um, partial x, partial u, partial y, partial v, times delta u, delta v, minus this other thing is partial x, partial v, partial y, partial u, delta u, delta v. And I can factor out a delta u, delta v. So I get partial x, partial u, partial y, partial v, minus partial x, partial v, partial y, partial u, delta u, delta v. And so the area is the absolute value of this. So it's going to be the absolute value of partial x, partial u, partial y, partial v, minus partial x, partial v, partial y, partial u, times delta u, delta v. I don't need an absolute value in these, delta u, delta v, because they're positive. Now remember, the magnification factor was what? Well, it's the area of this T of A, which is approximately this parallelogram, divided by the area of A, and the area of A, which is delta u, delta v. Okay, So the magnification factor is going to be this, divided by delta u, delta v. So this, this expression here is the magnification factor that we're looking for. So it's the determinant of this matrix if you don't have the delta u's and the delta v's in there. And there's a fancy word for this. It's called the Jacobian, or the absolute value of the Jacobian. So the Jacobian is the determinant of the matrix dx du, dx dv, dy du, dy dv. Notice that I, I wrote this matrix a little differently than before. So on the previous page, um, I had the x's in a column and the y's in a column. Well, the way I'm writing it here, I have the x's in a row and the y's in a row. That doesn't have any effect on what the determinant is. The determinant of the matrix stays the same if you replace a matrix by its transpose, which in this case just means switching the off-diagonal entries. Okay. So this is, this is sometimes denoted by partial xy 
over partial UV. And it's this determinant, which is if you expand it out, dx du dy dv minus dx dv dy du. And the magnification factor that we want is the absolute value of this. So the theorem for change of variables and in double integrals says that if, if t is a differentiable bijection as before, then the double integral over r of f dA equals the double integral over s of f composed with t times the absolute value of the Jacobian. Sorry, this is an x, not a u. dx, y, duv, dA. So the absolute value of the Jacobian is our magnification factor. And this is where t is a differentiable bijection. from S in the UV plane um, to R in the XY plane. And in the next lecture segment, we'll see some examples of how this works in practice.